9.3, solving quadratic equations using square roots. Okay, so when we're solving a quadratic equation using square roots, we might have something like x squared equals 25. So let's just get to this example, and then I'll talk about my bullet points there. But what we want to do is take the square root of both sides of this equation. So you might think to yourself, oh, wait, I just need something square that equals 25. Well, that would be 5. Okay, so a lot of times I'll see an answer like this, and that's partially right. But um, when you take the square root of both sides of an equation, you're going to get two different answers. Okay, but, so when I'm doing, I actually want to do plus or minus the square root of 25. Okay, so then square root of 25 is 5, so I've got plus or minus 5. And you could write them out separately, but it actually makes sense if you think about it, because 5 times 5 is 25, but also negative 5 times negative 5 is 25, okay? So there is a positive root and a negative root every time you take the square root of both sides of an equation, and that's an important idea and an important thing not to forget, okay? So the positive root is sometimes called the principal root. Okay? And there are no real square roots of a negative number, so we'll get to that in a second. But on this one, I take um, to get x, I'm going to take the positive and negative square root of 0. And um, 0 times 0 is 0. That's the only thing times itself that equals 0. So I'm going to get positive or negative 0, but there is no positive or negative 0. There's just 0, right? So this only has one solution when we're taking this the square root of zero okay when I try to take the square root of both sides here now I've got I'm trying to take the square root of a negative number and it's not going to exist you can do it with an, something called an imaginary number which we'll get into in the future um, in another course but um, we're just gonna say no solution when this happens because if you think about it nothing times itself is gonna equal a negative number three times three would be positive nine Negative 3 times negative 3 is also positive 9, right? So this has no solution. No real solution, technically. But we can just say no solution for now. Okay. All right. Um, so let's uh, look at these. Let's solve these with square roots. So the idea here is that we want to get first isolate the x squared so that it looks like these problems. Okay. So I'm going to start by adding 32 to both sides to isolate the 2x squared. Okay, so now 2x squared is going to equal positive 32. All right, and then I want to divide by 2 to isolate the x squared. x squared equals 16. And now that I've got the x, square, uh, x squared isolated, now I can take the square root of both sides. And so when I take the square root of both sides, don't forget plus or minus square root of 16. So square root of 16 is 4. 4 times 4 is 16, right? So positive or negative 4 is going to work there. You can always test out your answers. If you plug in a positive 4, it'll work on this equation, but so will a negative 4. Because when you square it, they're both going to come out to 16 right there. So you get 2 times 16 minus 32 equals 0. That's going to work out either way. Okay? So here all I have to do to isolate the x squared is subtract 12. Okay, and then I'll take the square root of both sides. But, hey, I've got a negative number under the radical, so there is no real um, square root there. So no solution anytime you get that negative under the radical. Okay. All right, let's try some more. So I'm trying to isolate the x squared here. Let's add 15. So 4x squared will equal 0. Then I want to isolate the x squared, so I'll divide by 4. 0 divided by 4 is 0. It's okay to have 0 on the top of a fraction, right? Just not on the bottom. So x squared equals 0. And then when I take the square root of both sides, usually you do positive or negative, but there's only, it's going to be 0. And 0 can't be positive or negative. So that's what you get when you take the square root of both sides there, okay? All right, next one's interesting. I've got, uh, it's not x squared, I've got this quantity squared, but we can use the same kind of idea. So if I, I want to get rid of the, uh, the exponent, the, the 2 up there, I can take the square root of both sides, but you've got to remember when you do that, 
you got the plus or minus. So when I take as the square root and the square undo each other, so that, that gives me just x minus 1 on the left. On the right, I've got plus or minus root 49. And the square root of 49 is 7. Okay, so I got down to this. Now I want to isolate x. I haven't solved this yet. I want to solve for x. I don't want to solve for x minus 1. So I'm going to add 1 to both sides. Okay, now um, you could say plus or minus 7 plus 1, but I'm going to put the 1 in front of the plus minus sign like that. Okay, and sometimes I'll get students leaving me answers like that, but we can do better with this because these are like terms. So what I want to do is take it down the two different paths. I've got x equals 1 plus 7, and I've got x equals 1 minus 7. So I want to solve both of those. Okay, 1 plus 7 is 8, so that's one of my solutions. And then 1 minus 7 would be negative 6. Okay, so there's my two solutions for that one. Okay. All right, so let's try it again with uh, another one. So first I want to get rid of that exponent. So I'll take the square root of both sides. And don't forget, every time you take the square root, get that plus minus symbol. Um, every time you take the square root of both sides of an equation, I should say. Okay. And hey, square root of 36, it would be 2. So 6. Wow. It's early in the morning. Okay. I was thinking, uh, I don't know, I was thinking about the 2 for some reason. So square root of 36 is 6. Okay. Now I want to start isolating the x. So I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides. And I'm going to put that 1 in front of the plus minus symbol. Okay. Um, you could divide by 2 right now if you wanted. Um, yeah, actually, let's go ahead and do that because we're trying to solve for, for x. Okay, so I'm running short on space here. Let me make myself some space. Okay, so now I've got it down to x equals negative 1 plus or minus 6 all over 2. Okay, but I don't want to leave my answer like that because I can simplify this. I want to take it down those two paths with the plus or minus. So x would equal negative 1 plus 6 over 2, but x would also equal negative 1 minus 6 all over 2. Okay, so let's solve both of these. This would be 5 over 2, or you could say 2.5 or 2.5 or something like that. Okay, and this would be negative 7 over 2 or you could say negative 3.5. So there I've got my two solutions. Okay. All right, next one. Let's get the x squared by itself. I'll subtract 8. x squared is going to equal 11. And now I'll take the square root of both sides. Okay. And then if you put, you could do a decimal approximation. It doesn't really say here if it wants an exact answer, a decimal approximation. Um, but uh, that's not a perfect square, right? So you could put this into a calculator, and it'd be about 3.32, something like that. Okay, so you could leave it like this, or you could say approximately 3.32, or depending on how many places you want to round it to. But either of those would work there. Okay. All right, let's try this one. Okay, I'll add 30 to both sides. So 3x squared equals 36. I sometimes see people um, taking the square root of both sides right now, but I've still got 3x squared here. Okay, so before you take the square root of both sides of the equation, isolate the x squared all the way. So I want to next divide by 3. Because you've got to take the square root of the whole equation. You can't just pick and choose the pieces you want to take a square root of. So 36 divided by 3 is 12. Now I'm going to take the square root of both sides. And I've got plus or minus square root of 12. Okay. Now this is not a perfect square, so if you wanted a decimal, you could put it into a calculator right now. You could also do this in, sim in simple radical form. So that would mean breaking this apart to look for twins. Right? We talked about this in a previous section. But um, I'm thinking of a multiplication problem where the answer is 12. I want to use integers, no decimals or fractions, and I want to use um, 
I don't want to use 1 times 12, so I'm looking for any other thing. So 2 times 6 would work. Okay, I'm looking for twins here, don't have any, but I can keep breaking up the 6. 6 would be 2 times 3. Now I found some twins, and then we can do a jailbreak. One of the twins gets out, the other one distracts the guards. Okay, and and uh, and doesn't make it. Okay, so still got the plus minus, a 2 got out, and now I have the 3. Okay, sometimes I see people, when they pull the 2 out, they'll put it in front of the plus minus, but it's going to be the coefficient of the radical. So it's going to be the number right in front of the radical. Okay, so you could say um, 2 root 3 here, or if you're doing the decimal version, I'd probably just put it in as the square root of 12. You could do 2 times the square root of 3, and it'd be about 3.47, 3.46 rather. Um, but you'd still want the plus or minus symbol however you write your answer there. Okay, You'd want it in one of those two formats, most likely. Next page, let's look at some applications, also known as word problems. Okay, here we have a planter box with a height of three feet. So that's in the picture there, okay? Its length is three times its width, okay? So it doesn't really matter which one of these is the length and which is the width, but since it said the, uh, the length is three times as long as the width, I'll make this side be the length, okay? And then this can be the width. So let's say the width is, um, let's say the width is gonna be X. I'll, I'll use X here, that's unknown. Okay, well, if this is three times as big, this would be 3x. Okay, that's just coming from this sentence right here. Okay, now we've got the volume formula, which is length times width times height. Okay, so the height is going to be 3. The length and width, uh, let's see, I said the width was x, so the length would be 3x. So I'm going to plug in those pieces. Um, 3x for the length, x for the width, and 3 for the height, okay? And what we're trying to do, I didn't read uh, what the, uh, the, the rest of the problem, we're trying to find the length and width, okay? So if we can solve for x, then we can find the length and the width. So maybe I'll just put, just so I f don't forget what's what, I was saying that the width is x and that the length is going to be 3x. So once I have x, I can find those really quickly. Okay. Now the other thing that I forgot to plug in, they tell us that the volume is 315. So I can plug that in for v. Okay. Then on this right side, I'm going to multiply this all together. It's all multiplication, right? So 3 times 3 would be 9, and then x times x is x squared. Okay. So now I've got my equation, and I'm pretty close to getting x. I just have to uh, isolate the x squared by dividing by 9. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and use my calculator there. 315 divided by 9 is 35. Okay, that's what x squared equals. And now I want to take the square root of both sides. And when I take the square root of both sides of an equation, I'm going to do the plus minus, okay? Let's see what the uh, square root of 35 is. And when looking for twins, it would be 7 times 5, but then you couldn't break it down any further, so no twins there. Okay, so let's put in the square root of 35 in our calculator to get a decimal. So it's about 5.9, I'll call it 5.916, okay? Okay. Now let's think about this. I could say that, oh, the width is positive or negative 5.916, but it wouldn't make sense for this to be a negative distance, right? Distances are always positive. So even though algebraically we get the positive and negative square root of 35, the negative one doesn't make sense here, okay? So my x is going to be about 5.916, and that was in feet, right? because all my other units are in feet. So there is x, there's my width, okay? And then I'm just gonna triple that. So I'm gonna take three times 5.916. So since I have that decimal still in my calculator, I'll just multiply that by three, okay? And I've got about 
17.748. Okay, and this is going to be in feet again. And it doesn't really matter which one you call the width and which one you call the length, because you could turn this box on its side, right? That's uh, so. If you had those um, those swapped, that would still be correct. Okay. All right. Let's try one more. This has uh, we're talking about the surface area of a sphere, which is something you'd study in uh, geometry probably for the first time. But here is the um, formula for it. So they give us the formula. You're not expected to know that. Okay. This says um, solve the formula for r. Okay. So I'm taking this formula, and I want to get the r by itself. Okay. So this is the pi symbol, and remember pi is just a number. It's about 3.14. So this is 4 times 3, about 3.14 times r squared. So to get the r squared isolated, I'm going to divide both sides by 4 pi. Okay. So then those will cancel. And now I've got, uh, I've got s over 4 pi equals r squared. Okay. And the next thing I want to do to get r by itself is take the square root of both sides. And when you're taking the square root of both sides of an equation with the plus minus symbol. And that gives me r over there. So I've solved for r. Okay. Now let's find the radius of a sphere with a surface area of 804 square inches. Now you could put that surface area right in there into the original equation for 804, but it's going to be easier to put it in in this version because um, we've already got the radius isolated here. Okay, so I'm going to say plus or mi minus. I'm just going to put my r on the left here. Okay, and. The surface area is 804 over 4 pi. Okay, so I'm going to use my calculator to figure out what 4 pi is. So I've got a pi button on my calculator, so I'm going to do 4 times pi like that. But if you didn't have a pi button, you could use 3.14, and that'll get get you close enough. Okay, so I've got I'm putting approximately now because I've um, I've rounded my this number a little bit. I'm going to call that 12.566. Okay, and now I'm going to simplify the fraction. So I'm going to do 804 divided by 12.566. The more of the decimal you use, the better, but I'm trying to go quick here. Okay, so that should get me close enough. Okay. And then I want to take the square root of that number. So I'm going to do the square root of 63.982. And that's going to give, it's very close to 8. So I'm just going to say round it to 8 because I've already rounded those other decimals a little bit. Okay, so I've got plus or minus 8. Now let's think about this. You've got to know a little bit about what a radius is. So here's a sphere, right? It's not a circle because it's shaded. It's supposed to be three-dimensional. But the radius is still the distance from the center of a sphere to a point on the outside of the sphere. So the radius would look like, like something like that. Now it wouldn't make sense for that distance to be negative 8. It, would, it could be positive 8, but not negative 8. So um, I'm going to throw out the negative answer here. It makes sense algebraically, but it doesn't make sense in the context of a sphere. You can't have a negative distance. So I'm just going to say this is about 8, and I want to use inches. This, Since the volume is, um, the surface area is square inches, the radius is going to be in just inches, because you could just me measure that with a ruler, right? So there's my units, there's my radius, and that's the end of the section. And I'll see you next time.